This is Jack Rook at Columbia Gorge Community College, and in this session I want to look at food labeling. The current Nutrition Facts food labels have been around since the early 1990s, but I'm not really sure that consumers uh, understand all of the information that they can get off of a food label. So what I'd like to do is go through some of that information and just highlight some of the important things that uh, you can get off a food label and how you can determine and how they do come about determining the, the daily values and some of the information on there. What I'd look at, like to look at first is just a mandatory food label that has all the nutrition facts information required by uh, companies. Now there are exceptions, for example, uh, if you have a can like a tuna can that doesn't have a much, uh, as much space as a normal can, uh, they do reduce the amount of requirements that are available there so you may not see all the information. Plus if you have a product like a uh, soda that has no nutritional value, uh, there would be no reason to list all of the information and just have a bunch of zero percents there so they don't require them to have all the information on the label but if you have a standard food product what you see on the screen is the mandatory requirements um, that all companies have to meet uh, in order to um, come up to the standards of the FDA and what you see um, also is the appropriate listing of all the, the uh, nutrients and all the information. Uh, there is a standard by which uh, all food companies have to follow that say that the information has to be at the same place on every food label. And so the, at the very top after the nutrition facts title, you'll see the serving size at the very top, servings per container. Then you'll see calories, calories from fat, and then the listing of the nutrients in that uh, specific order that they're required. Um, the, this is required because uh, the FDA basically, um, in, rightly so, thought, well, if we allowed uh, companies to just put the information wherever they wanted to, it would be very difficult for consumers to find the information because they'd be searching and um, it's hard enough to go through a grocery store and just look at the food labels as they are now and if we had to search and then less and less people would be able to find that information so for convenience and for uh, speed of being able to find the information that a consumer wants then they um, have the companies all list them in this specific order so um, this is the mandatory information as I mentioned uh, there are some products where you'll see a lot more information on the food label but this is uh, either for two reasons number one is that the uh, company makes a specific nutrition claim uh, on the food product and so when they make a specific uh, claim then they have to show on the label for example, if you had something as high in vitamin D, you don't see vitamin D on this food label, but if it was something that was on their advertising claim or something on their label, then they would have to include vitamin D as <clears throat> one of the uh, nutrition facts. Um, and then also there are some companies as a marketing tool will just list all of uh, you know the vitamins and things that are in that food so it makes it look like it's a lot better than another food product and it may not be necessarily so it may be just that they have decided that they're just going to add uh, all of the nutrients there sometimes as a marketing tool to get consumers to think that they're better than another product but other other than those two things um, then this this is the mandatory information so what I want to do is go through this information and just show you uh, what things that uh, as a consumer you could get off of this label that could help you to make better decisions about the foods that you choose um, to go through um, the food labeling standards, uh, the daily value is the reference standard. That's what you're going to see on the food label. But the daily values are um, a set of values that come from two different 
other sets of standards that were developed by the FDA. So let me go through those two standards that make up the daily values. The reference daily intakes, now these are coming from the RDAs or what we know as the DRIs now from the 1968 standards. And so they're, they're not really completely up to date. And so what I will be telling you as we go through this information is that a food label is not to be used to uh, put a diet plan together or to make sure you get 100% of um, the food labels are mainly for um, comparison tools or if you have a specific nutrition related issue that you could find that information and make the better choice uh, between two products uh, kind of thing. So. Uh, the 1968 standards and, and the other key is that they're adopted from the highest 1968 standard so it doesn't really reflect individuality it's pretty much lumped into what is the highest standard within the RDAs from 1968 so for example you can see iron uh, <clears throat> the DV is 18 and that reflects that females need 18 milligrams and males only 10, but they're going to choose the highest uh, of the RDAs. And so, um, and then as you as you see with vitamin C, there's sometimes a question as to why they chose what they did. Uh, but and then vitamin A, uh, so it it can be a little bit confusing. Uh, but they're supposed to be the highest of the 1968 standards or higher. So that's one. Uh, so on the food label, what you'll see is iron, calcium, vitamin C, and vitamin A under the nutrition facts, but no other vitamins or minerals unless the company, you know, again, again makes a claim to have something uh, or they uh, decide to do that on their own. So RDIs and then the DRVs, which the DRVs are a set of standards that really do not have an RDA or a DRI. Uh, but they are related to uh, common health problems that we see in uh, consumers in this country. And so things uh, related to heart disease, things related to cancer, things to related to osteoporosis or hypertension uh, or dealing with fiber issues, that kind of thing. These would kind of come under the auspices of the DRV. And the FDA, basically, what they did is got together as a group and just decided uh, that we, uh, we are going to sit down and we are going to make up some standards. But, I mean, it wasn't just off the top of their head. They did look at the research. They did look at the most current information and made uh, some determinations about standards from that information. And so I give you examples at the very bottom. Uh, but the other key is that all of these standards are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. And so, once again, these labels are not meant for everybody to look at and say, I need to get 100% of this because you may eat more or less than 2,000 calories. And so if, you, if that's the case, then these standards don't fit you. So once again, the labels are mainly for comparison tools or if you have a specific nutrition issue like heart disease or like osteoporosis, or hypertension, then you would look at the sodium levels, you'd look at the cholesterol levels, uh, and those kinds of things. So, um, and you'd, you'd look at the percentages and you'd make decisions on the product from that, but not to, to base your, your diet intake on. Um, just some information off the food labels. Uh, uh, serving size has to be in units that we understand. Uh, teaspoons, cups, fluid ounces, that, and but they're also in metric measures. So this would give you an example of the traditional English measure versus the metric measure. But the units have to be um, based on what people would, would typically eat. One thing about serving size that you need to be careful of is that all of the daily values and all the standards are based on the serving size. So one thing you need to be careful of is 
when you look at products that say they have a um, reduced number of calories per serving, uh, it may be that they did nothing to their food product. They didn't change it at all. What they did was just change the serving size because the company can can change their serving size as long as it's using a typical measure then they can adjust their serving size to whatever they want but correspondingly they have to adjust their nutrition facts information based on that serving size example might be if you had a bread that's in slices so a slice would be a serving size they could say reduced you know calories per slice well again they may not have changed their formula of how they made their bread they may just have made the slices thinner so they're not telling an untruth they are being truthful in that there are reduced number of calories per serving but it's that their serving sizes is actually now smaller than it used to be so you have to as a consumer you'd want to be careful of that and compare serving sizes just to make sure uh, that you're making a you know a an intelligent choice from that uh, as you look at the nutrients what you'd want to be uh, thinking about in in understanding is you know looking at the percentage of DV you know what what can I get out of these percentages how can I use these percentages well there are nutrients on there that um, you don't want to get a hundred percent of so you know you don't want to get a hundred percent of cholesterol or saturated fat or sodium or sugar that would make no sense because those are related to health issues and so we're trying to reduce those in our diet so you'd want to have less than a hundred percent of those type of nutrients but things like fiber the vitamins and minerals uh, you'd want to get up to 100% as close as you could to 100% or more uh, and so you'd want to have a higher percentage of these um, and once again this number three just shows you that everything is based on a 2000 calorie diet so um, if you eat 2500 calories then the information you're gonna to have to make adjustments to the information or 1500 you'd actually need less um, in that case so these aren't meant for individuality um, so that's the percent daily values of 2000 the vitamins A and C calcium and iron really uh, are just based on those uh, DRIs are the 1968 standards from the RDA uh, of that. Um, just as a general guide that you could use as a consumer is if you are just need to do a quick look, what you would uh, be thinking about is that uh, anything that's 5% or below is considered low and anything that's 20% or above is considered high. So for the uh, nu nutrients that you would want to get less than 100% of, you would want to get something that's closer to the 5% range. So the cholesterol is a saturated fat, the um, sodium and sugars and those then you'd want to get as close or you know at least under 20 percent or as close to five percent as you possibly can and then the other ones you would want to get as close to 20 percent or above as you can so fiber and the vitamins and so forth you'd want to get uh, you know choose products so you're when you're looking at the nutrition facts in the products you look at that use that five percent twenty percent rule uh, to make uh, adequate choices uh, to uh, comparison shop and to compare two products that are similar then you look at those percentages and they can be very helpful in making a, a correct choice from that so those are just general guides that you can use to make a little bit instead of having to look all over and trying to determine you know is this good bad or ugly you can actually look at the and use that five percent twenty percent rule and it'll give you a quick guide uh, for making those choices. 
Uh, what I'd like to do now is just go through a food label and show you how they get the information just to give you a little bit more information and then also some information that you can get from a food label. The first question might be, well, where do they come up with the calories? How do they determine calories? And, and what you'll find as we go through the calories is kind of a, an adjustment and average. They kind of try to even it out. They can maybe uh, reduce the amount or increase the amount and try to make it an even number uh, kind of thing. But it's going to be very, very close. Where they get it from is that uh, they will take the grams of protein, so all of the energy nutrients, the protein, the carbohydrates, and the total fat, and they will take that information and they will change the grams into calories. So here's how we would do that. If we took the, the fat, knowing that there are nine calories uh, per gram in fat, then if we took that 13 grams times nine, we'd get 117. The carbohydrates, we'd multiply them times four because they're four calories per gram, we'd get 124. And then protein, we would get a uh, 20 calories for five times four so for a total of 261 so that's you know one calorie difference than that they'd show on the food label that they just kind of rounded down now i think you know there is a limit to how much you can round uh, but this is close enough that they allow you to uh, the company to round down a little bit uh, from that the other thing is that you really don't have to memorize uh, these numbers because on most food labels you'll find them at the very bottom of the nutrition facts label it tells you exactly uh, what you um, what you would use to determine the calories now that information may not be uh, as important to you um, but it is important to, you know just for our sake here and this is discussion is to show you how do they come up with these calories, what do they use. Now if we had alcohol on in that label, alcohol is also seven calories per gram, so they would be adding uh, some information uh, to the calories about uh, alcohol. Um, how do they get calories from fat? Well, it's it's easy if you uh, look at what we have. So calories from fat be just the, the 13 grams of total fat. Now, when you look at that label, you'll see saturated and trans. Well, those are all also all included in that 13. Um, so, as you know, there's polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, but they don't necessarily need to show them because they're not required on the food label. Um, so you can make the assumption that there's you know five grams of saturated, two grams of trans, and then seven grams. So obviously there's six grams of some other type of either mono or polyunsaturated. Um, but to get the um, total amount of fat, then we would just take 13 times nine, so I'd give it 117, and they chose to round up a little bit. Uh, my understanding is that you really, for fat, you can't really round down. They don't allow you to round down. Um, and so um, this is where they would get the, the 120. One of the, Not so important because it says on the food label, what you can get from this information, though, that can be important is the percent calories from fat. Um, this would be important if you had a food product where it said, oh, we have low calories. But uh, if you look closer at that and determine percent calories for fat, what you'll find is that uh, it may have low calories per serving, but it has a high fat percentage. So most of the food you're, if, you know, most of the nutrients or fat or calories you're getting from that food or from fat. And so what you can do in this product, you know, and we're going to try to be as close to accurate as possible, we would take our 117, even though it says calories from fat 120, uh, we could take our 117 divided by 260, I um, guess it should be 261, times 100. So in, in essence, you, you get about 45% fat. So this product is about half fat. So even though... You know, the marketing might be, oh, it's only 260, you know, calories per serving. Uh, half of it comes from fat. Well, that's that's not a very good product to choose. It's not a very good choice. So where this might come into play for a consumer is if you purchase a, um, 
a pre-prepared meal. Uh, you know, we used to call them TV dinners, that kind of thing. Something like that that's pre-prepared. You might want to look and determine the percent calories from fat because even though it may say only 350 calories, it may be mostly from fat. And um, our goal is going to be to choose things that would be 30% or less from fat. And some of the uh, better products that are pre-prepared are somewhere in the range of 21, 23%. So they're good. But some of the cheaper things, cheaper products may be very, very high fat. Um, so that's uh, just one thing that you can get off of a food label that could help you make a better decision on that. The other thing that I want to just go over is, well, how do they determine percent daily value? Where do they get inf information from? And so we're going to look specifically at sodium, which is, you can see, has a daily value of 28 percent. Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, we look at the bottom of that food label and we will look at sodium and specifically uh, we see under the 2000 calorie range because remember we said percent uh, daily values based on a 2000 calorie intake we could look at sodium and the FDA has determined that 2400 milligrams is the standard for someone eating 2,000 calories, but you notice if you ate 2,500, it would it would be the same uh, for sodium. But if we look at some of the other nutrients like total fat, it would be 80 grams instead of 65. Saturated fat 25 instead of 20. So you have to be um, careful if you're trying to. Um, uh, look at the percentages and you're eating either more or less of t than 2,000, then um, you would look at those. Now you can look up this information um, on the internet and you can find out what are the percentages for 1,500 because they are available. They just don't put them on a food label, but they do 2,500, mainly because females eat close to 2000 and males about 2500 so they kind of designated male female kind of issues uh, but anyway how they determine 28 percent is that you would take the 660 milligrams divide it by 2400 milligrams I think I have that and multiply that times 100 to give you about 27.5 percent or they rounded up to 28 percent so that's how they got the 28 um, percent and you can do that for all of the daily uh, values for example you see cholesterol is 30 milligrams you'll look down under 2000 category at the bottom and you see it's 300 well 30 divided by 300 gives you 10 percent so that's how they get the percentages uh, on the food label based on that 2,000 calorie diet. Um, but if we look at iron, once again, um, we're not looking at the 2,000 calorie uh, diet range. What we're looking at is the RDAs and the DRIs. So we, we saw earlier that uh, the highest RDA, 1968 RDA, was 18 milligrams. Um, and so if we looked at uh, 4%, what that means is that your actually int actual intake would be 0.72 milligrams of um, iron in that case. So this is just kind of a, uh, a review of the food label, just some information as a consumer that you can get off the food label. So I hope it... Uh, helps you and when you go to the grocery store that you can uh, look at food labels and, and make better choices using that 20 percent 5 percent rule and then maybe figuring out the percent calories from fat so that you can make adequate choices.